Repetition is a frequent element of Hebrew poetry, and they particularly enjoyed something that's called parallelism. Taking a thought, then immediately rephrasing it. Verse 1 is a perfect example of this. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of, of mockers. How many repetitions do we observe here? There's three. Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers or mockers. And the purpose of this parallelism is to drive the point home, to bring emphasis to one final truth. And the point here, stay away from evil. And repetition, parallelism, also gives David, uh, if he wrote this psalm, a tool for teaching us a very useful lesson here about staying away from evil, by, uh, by pointing out how subtly it can grow in our heart. Evil doesn't, doesn't get us in a moment, does it? It doesn't ambush us out of nowhere. Notice, first we walk by it. We walk in the counsel of the wicked. It's like a, a fleeting thought. Oh, look, there's, there's evil over there. But then, let's say it catches our thought and ignites a, a spark of desire in, inside of us. What do we do? We stop. We start to turn that thought, that idea, over in our minds. We're now standing in the way of sinners. We're not trying to walk past anyway. We're not trying to get away anymore. Until we find ourselves so liking that thought, that we camp out there, we pull up a chair. Now we're sitting in the seat of scoffers. And my friends, that's how evil works with us, isn't it? Walter White didn't go from being a high school teacher to a murdering drug, drug lord in a week. Satan plays the long game with us. Most of the, of the freeways that run through Las, Los Angeles, if you've ever had the joy of driving through Los Angeles, most of them have a, a commuter lane where if you've got two or more passengers, you can take it. And if you're ever caught in that, man, they're going to take your firstborn, or they promise some horrific fine. <laughs> Last summer, I got behind this super slow car that was hanging out in the far left passing lane. It is the passing lane. It is not the camp here and contempla contemplate life lane. And after a few minutes of trying to envision how to to properly motivate and educate this driver into proper road etiquette, and I think I had visions of a bazooka come into my mind as I mulled it over, I did something, I hate to confess it now, that I'd never done before. I zipped over into the commuter lane, I, and I shot right by him, slid back into safe zone just like that. I'd never done that before. I'd spent two years resisting the thought, cursing other drivers when they did it. Lawbreakers, felons, fly on you and your household. And now I was one of them. But then you know what? It didn't take two years before I did it the next time. No, it took two weeks. And all the guilt and angst and fear and conviction I used to have about it wasn't nearly as strong this time around. Had the law changed? Nope. I was changing. Until the Spirit of God called me out on it a short time later. Do you see what's happening, son? I sensed God saying to me one day, and I went, what, what? And Psalm 1 came to mind. You've gone from walking to standing to sitting in the seat of mockers. Well, technically, I'm driving, Lord, I said, being a smart aleck, but I saw clear as day what he was saying. Law-breaking had become easy for me. I wasn't feeling it as wrong anymore. So, question, does it matter whether you feel that sin is a sin for it to be wrong for you? No. It's what God thinks about it that matters. End of story. Everyone in, this, in our country used to think that living together before marriage or having sex together before marriage was sin, was wrong, it will hurt you. Now, nobody feels that way. But God hasn't changed his thinking about it, has he? But that's how evil takes over our heart. So subtly. The frog in the kettle. We don't say to ourselves, oh look, I'm becoming evil. Hmm? Now see what I just took three or four minutes to explain. David said in one sentence. Using parallelism. So, let's hear it for poetry. Artists of Bridgeway, rise up. Come forth. Don't let our scientists and engineers have all the fun.